What a day of baseball here in Ancaster. Team BC's Matt Shanley hit a three-run home run in the fourth inning, and that was the difference in the ball game against Team Ontario. BC wins eight to five in a thriller. So they're into the championship game. And now Team Quebec, earlier on today, it was a close one against Calgary West Little League from Alberta. Zachary Desjardins in the top of the seventh in extra innings with a solo home run. Quebec wins eight to seven. We'll be back to wrap it up right after the break. the first one go for it why are you blind have you ever been drunk do you randomly swear i understand people are curious but don't ask me that on the subway exactly welcome back here's what we have on tap tomorrow the championship game the 2019 canadian little league championship for mancaster it'll be Team Quebec against Team BC. Quebec has the big bats. They've reached the championship game for the second time in three years. Team BC hoping their big bats will be there as well. Looking forward to a great day of baseball tomorrow. This is CBC Here and Now. The Muskrat Falls project has been a controversial one here in Labrador, and people who will be living with the mega project in their backyard got their chance to weigh in at the public inquiry looking into the project last night. And death is upon us as far as I'm concerned when it comes to our culture. How would you feel if I came into your land and told you I got a great deal for you and stole your car and your garage and your living room and poisoned your children? I'll tell you more about that coming up on Here and Now. The Folk Festival is underway. It's a bit rainy, but there are still expecting hundreds of people to come to the park. Find out how they're planning to reduce the amount of waste all those people create. That's coming up on Here and Now. 
Good evening and welcome to Here and Now. I'm Carolyn Stokes. We begin in northern Labrador where poor summer weather is causing major headaches. This is what it looked like in Nain today and what it has looked like for the most of the last 10 days. Just two airplanes have managed to land in Nain since the fog rolled in last week. And that means vacations, medical appointments and work turnarounds are all on hold, not to mention shipping and freight. Natwashish is in a similar situation. We trying to get out since uh, Monday. We got a, a birthday girl that's waiting for the food for her party so that food is going to go uh, waste if we don't get out. I came in here on Sunday. I'm heading up there for work. Uh, we're doing a, a youth center there in that was just, Okay. So, I mean, I got to get in. We got to get work done, right? You got to have a lot of patience. You got to have a good attitude, you know, and a good, uh, good company. <laughs> In small communities along the Labrador coast, pilots fly by sight, meaning they need to be able to see the runway to land on it. Air Borealis is the only airline that serves the region. They say when the fog lifts, it'll still take a few days to get back on track, but it's not looking likely for this weekend. We've had continuous poor weather and the long range forecast is not looking a whole lot better particularly for the mountainous regions and in the north at, uh, at Nain and Natwashish. So, um, you know, it's probably going to be into Monday before we see a clearing trend that will uh, allow us to be able to operate We'll hear more from Philip Earl a little bit later in the show. Meanwhile, the band Rum Ragged is also fighting that foggy weather. Their trip to the Torngat Mountains was supposed to last just four days. Yesterday was day 12. So they got in a boat and headed south for Nain. And the boys had a little jam session before leaving the Torngats. They say they're making the best of a bad situation. They spent 18 hours at sea to make it to Nain. The plan is to carry on down the coast until they find better flying weather. And the band does have a deadline. They're due to play the closing slot at the 43rd annual Newfoundland and Labrador Folk Festival in St. John's on Sunday night. So how is the weather looking for the Folk Festival? Well, here's a breakdown of the next 24 hours. Some light showers this evening with temperatures in the mid-teens overnight. That will change to overcast skies and some fog patches to start the day on Saturday. When the festival gets underway tomorrow at 10 o'clock, the skies should be fairly gray with light winds. And then as the day continues, it could feel pretty muggy. Temperatures bump up to the mid-20s, but with that humidex, it'll feel more like 31. Later Later in the afternoon, there's a chance you could see another shot of light showers, so you might want to bring a raincoat just in case. And as for the rest of the province, here's the weekend outlook. Central areas looking at some afternoon showers tomorrow and hot temperatures. The west coast can expect a gray, drizzly weekend with temperatures around 24 degrees tomorrow, but the humidex will make it feel more like 29. Chance of showers up through St. Anthony with temperatures hovering in the high teens, low 20s. Labrador can expect a mainly cloudy day on Saturday with a chance of showers a bit cooler in the west with a high of 17 on Saturday and Sunday. I'll have the full forecast later in the show, but for now, let's head outdoors to the site of the Folk Festival, Bannerman Park, where Peter Cowan is standing by live. So, Peter, it looks like it's uh, pretty wet out there tonight. Well, because this is Newfoundland, everyone always looks on the bright side, and that is the good news is there isn't much wind, so you can actually use an umbrella. And so there are lots of umbrellas out here tonight as uh, people get ready. The uh, opening ceremonies just happening right now behind me here at the Folk Festival, but they are expecting lots of people to show up, especially as the weather improves into tomorrow. And one of the challenges with a festival is all the garbage that gets produced from all the food and all the other things that uh, people bring with them. But uh, this year, the Folk Festival is doing something a little bit different. And I got a chance to chat with the president, Anna Brophy, about just what they're doing this year. There's a lot of waste that gets produced at a festival like this. What are you guys doing this year in order to try and reduce it? Well, we are embarking on what we hope to be a multi-year project or a long-term project in diverting waste from the landfills. So uh, the Folk Festival has uh, developed partnerships with Avalon Recycling and Island Compost to take away as much uh, waste as we can from, from landfills. 
So I can show you that we are gonna be uh, recycling plastic, so cups, lids, and cutlery, and all, the, and all those things. Um, you know, the typical glass, aluminum, plastic, and things like that. And then, unfortunately, there's some stuff we just can't recycle or divert, so that will go in the waste bin. And then we have compost. So this is a bit more robust than your backyard compost, so we can put things like napkins and even cardboard packaging and things like that. So we're really excited to try this out this year and see how it goes, and then hopefully this will be something we can maintain for years to come. And I guess the good news is there's lots of little pictures there because people are going to be wondering, okay, I'm not used to composting, yeah. but, you know, even things like your napkins or, you know, a paper food container yeah. can actually go in there. Exactly. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, we get a lot of adoption. Um, it's going to take practice and we know that. So I know, you know, there's always instances where someone might throw something in the wrong bin and our uh, partners are okay with that and they know we'll have to deal with it. So what about plastic water bottles? Because that's something a lot of festivals have either decided to ban or, you know, they're working on trying to reduce that. Well, with the federal government initiative uh, in a couple of years to do that, uh, you know, we're definitely on board and it's something that we hope to move towards as well, maybe next year. So, mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, a full weekend of entertainment. Who are some of the headliners going to be this year? Well, um, on our main stages, we have uh, the Jerry Cans, Bill and Joel Plaskett, Tim Baker, uh, Sharon Shannon, and Rum Ragged. So those are on the main stage, but uh, you know, there's tons of entertainment, dance, story, everything else in the, in the little tents. We have a really strong Francophone lineup this year, as well as a uh, partnership with First Light, and they have programmed four hours of Indigenous programming on Sunday, so. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you very much for telling me all about it. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And of course, those are some of the big names that they've brought in for the festival. Uh, but this festival is also about recognizing local talent. And this year, receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award is Shirley Montague. And I'll get a chance to chat with her about what this means for her after 50 years of performing. That's coming up a little bit later on Here and Now. back to Labrador now where protesters brought a coffin to a public meeting last night. The Muskrat Falls inquiry was in Happy Valley Goose Bay to hear people's concerns about the project and as here and now's Jacob Barker reports many of the speakers said they were in mourning. These pallbearers are here to make a point. This is a symbolic act at a public consultation. The coffin is the symbol of death. A death is upon us as far as I'm concerned when it comes to our culture. It's the death of our river. I haven't got the nerve up to go look at it yet because I've seen some pictures but I haven't seen it personally. I know it's going to be really different and that's very sad for me. Many of those in attendance have long stood against the project. They're the same people who rallied outside the site in 2016. Some even walked onto the project, shutting it down as Nalcor inched towards the first stages of filling the reservoir. Demonstrators were worried about methyl mercury, a compound that will be released when the reservoir floods. Some wanted mitigation measures, others wanted to see it shut down completely. Reservoir flooding is now underway and should be complete by the end of September. Amongst the crowd here, a sense of betrayal. What would you do? How would you feel if I came into your land and told you I got a great deal for you and stole your car and your garage and your living room and poisoned your children and your mom is afraid she's going to drown. How would you feel if I'd done that to you? The government of Newfoundland and Labrador has not only failed to eliminate those worries by intervening, but they've intentionally avoided acknowledging concerns and have failed to resolve very important issues. Some say the changes to the river are already evident. I walked down on the beach this morning. I went from Birch Island to almost to Maxwell's on the riverbank. I could never ever walk there before. Never ever. And others believe that a devastating flood in 2017, which caused areas to evacuate, was a consequence of the project. We need and want an independent study done on the North Spur to let people know it is safe, that we can sleep at night. Inquiry Commissioner Richard LeBlanc was there listening on as the speeches were made. And those who are here will be listening closely once he makes his final report, hoping their voices speak as loudly in it as they rung out on this night. Jacob Barker, CBC News, Happy Valley Goose Bay. 
Well, it was a brutal, shocking case of child abuse and one where government admitted liability. In 2005, a mother from Clark's Beach was sentenced to six years behind bars for putting her children through years of torture. The provincial government allowed the children to stay in the home, but almost 15 years later, we're not allowed to know what that negligence cost the taxpayers. Here now is Ryan Cook has been after those numbers for months now, and he joins me in studio. So Ryan, all of this is normally public information, right? Yeah, under normal cir circumstances, this is all public information. We learned about this story from the Telegram in March that settlements were reached with three of the children. So we asked the province for dollar figures. How much did those mistakes cost? And they refused to hand over the figures. They said it would violate settlement privilege. But that's not a valid reason under the province's privacy and information laws. So we filed a complaint with the Information and Privacy Commissioner, and the results came back today. Okay, so the decision did not rule in our favor. Why is that? Well, uh, it said that releasing the dollar figures could identify the victims in this case. The children lived in a home in Clark's Beach where they were beaten, shackled, left in the cold and, and left in their own filth. They were taken from their mother's care in 1995, but they were given back and the abuse continued. It was a huge story in the province and Clark's Beach is a very small town. All we asked for was how much government paid out and when the checks were cut. So while this information would normally have to be released, the commissioner told us it could end up identifying the victims. Now we have good reason to believe that these settlements were huge and our position was that, hey, we should be allowed to know how much the government has to pay for these mistakes. The government argued that if other abuse victims knew how much they settled for, we could be out a lot of money. But the commissioner rejected that argument, and in the end, it just came down to privacy. Okay, so is there any recourse here? Yeah, we can appeal to the Supreme Court of Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, we have a couple of weeks to make that decision and, and see if that's the route that we want to take. Okay, well, keep us posted. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you. As here now is Ryan Cook reporting. New World Fitness in St. John's has announced it will close its doors at the end of the month after 30 years in business. 40 staff members will lose their jobs and more than 1,000 gym members will lose a place to work out. The company says the business landscape has changed with increased competition and rising operating costs. The gym and swimming pool will shut down on August 30th. The RCMP is opening a new national forensic lab. It's because some provinces, including Newfoundland and Labrador, have complained about the length of time it takes to get test results. Earlier this year, police in the province cited cutbacks at the forensic lab for delaying their investigation into an alleged drunk driver after a head-on crash. The lab will open this fall in Surrey, B.C. The country used to have six labs, but in a bid to save money in 2012, the RCMP closed facilities in Halifax, Winnipeg and Regina. Well, buskers from all over the world are in St. John's right now. They've been coming here for 15 years as part of the annual Downtown Buskers Festival. And in that time, they've inspired some homegrown talent. Here now is Katie Breen reports. As my show goes on, it is going to get higher and higher and higher and the danger is going to go up and up and up. They look up in awe. How is he doing that? For 15 years now, people of all ages have been coming out to the downtown St. John's Buskers Festival. Some say, wow, and move on. But for others, it really sticks. I think it's pretty cool that when I was younger, I'd come down and watch the other performers, and I think it's, yeah, it's pretty cool that now I'm one of the performers, so. Who is ready for the St. John's Buskers Festival puppet lip sync battle? Jake Thompson picked up puppets a few years ago. Now he's got a show on Rogers TV. This is his Buskers Festival debut, and he has a bunch of other performances scheduled for this weekend. It's going pretty good so far. Yeah. What do people think of Lou? Oh, well, I can answer that one there, Katie. Uh, people think I'm the best puppet in the show, and yeah, there you go. Joshua Martell is a little newer to performance art. Last year, he was on the other side of the table, totally transfixed by a guy doing spray paint art. He came to the festival, watched the artist for hours, and talked to him about what he was doing. 
Do you keep in touch with him? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What does he think of what you're doing now? He's happy that I'm doing it. Yeah? Yeah. Very cool. Do you show him your work? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. So if you want to catch any of this festival, it's happening downtown St. John's at a few different places. There are performances on the hour every hour tonight, tomorrow, and on Sunday, unless it gets rained out. Katie Breen, CBC News, St. John's. And as you can see, there is rain here already, actually, and more to come. This is a live shot of St. John's Harbor, about five millimeters of rain expected overnight. And it's cool out there right now, too, 14 degrees. Lots of fog, lots of rain. I'll tell you all about the weather forecast coming up. Welcome back to Here and Now. Ashley is off tonight, so I'm going to walk us through the weather forecast for this weekend, starting with a look at your satellite and radar. You can see for the island, it's been a pretty wet afternoon, lots of rain, lots of cloud cover, and that is going to continue throughout this evening for much of the east in particular, as well for parts of Labrador starting in the west and pushing east. Uh, could even see some thunder showers in Labrador City. For the overnight lows for the island, not too bad. 
looking at 12 degrees in St. Anthony with those showers persisting there. For St. John's, about five millimeters of rain expected overnight there with a southeasterly wind gusting up to 30. For the south in the Buren area, looking at about two millimeters of rain, staying fairly warm though overnight at 16 degrees for your overnight low. And for the Port of Basque area, the Rec House area, looking at some fairly high winds, about 70 kilometers an hour gusting there overnight tonight. As we move into Labrador, about two millimeters of rain expected for the Nain area. Cool overnight lows, nine degrees expected there. Happy Valley Goose Bay, quite different there with some showers, 16 degrees overnight. And there are those chance of a thunder showers for Labrador City tonight. So looking ahead to tomorrow, Saturday, if you have plans, this is what you can expect. Lots of cloud cover for the island, lots of showers for Labrador. We're in this pattern of gray, kind of muggy, wet weather, and pretty much everyone is going to be getting a taste of that, particularly the West Coast tomorrow. You can see for the central areas, looking at a bit of sunshine there and stay fairly cloudy in the east and a chance of showers there as well in the afternoon uh, and as well for Labrador throughout the day. So we're looking at a high of 24 degrees in St. John's tomorrow. Very light winds, but with that humidex, it's going to feel more like 31. So it's going to be pretty gray, pretty muggy. And in the afternoon, we could see a few spits of showers. So uh, you'll want to make note of that for sure if you're heading out for Marystown, looking at a chance of showers there in the afternoon as well. 25 degrees as the high, getting warmer as we push in through central, a humidex of 33 for Grand Falls, Windsor tomorrow with a chance of afternoon showers as well there, but mostly a mix of sun and cloud throughout the day. For the West Coast, though, more persistent showers throughout the day. It's going to be much more gray uh, there. 24 degrees as the high in Corner Brook. Pretty warm as well in the Deer Lake area, looking at a humidex of 32 there. And uh, those winds lighten up over uh, the day as well from the previous night. As we move into the Straits, a little bit cooler here. Chance of showers, St. Anthony looking at about a high of 19 degrees. Light winds continue there. For the rest of Labrador, Nain getting another two millimeters of rain tomorrow. And uh, 19 degrees as the high in Makovic with a chance of showers. And Lab City looking at a high of just 17 degrees with some showers. Looking ahead to Sunday, things are a little bit better. Uh, but still not great. You can see that cloud cover is continuing. Those showers continuing for the west coast and for the south coast and lots of patchy showers for Labrador as well. And for the afternoon, the Buren and in through the Avalon could see a few showers there as well. But mostly we're looking at a mix of sun and cloud for St. John's 24 degrees on Sunday. So if you're choosing which is the better day, Saturday or Sunday, it's looking like Sunday is going to be the better day. 21 degrees for the Marystown area with a chance of shower hours there looking quite nice in through central and very warm 25 degrees as the high in gander along the west coast those showers do continue throughout the day temperatures around 20 degrees for the corner brook area and as for labrador nain is staying on the cool side with those showers continuing 10 degrees as the high there and lab city is sticking with that to 17 degrees as the high uh, in lab city so if you are starting a vacation uh, this this weekend. It's not looking terrible next week, but it's not looking great uh, on Monday when you start uh, the week. A chance of some showers uh, for the east and that chance of showers will continue into Tuesday and uh, then a bit more cloud cover and overcast for Wednesday and some showers there. So temperatures, you know, between 22, 23 degrees and then dipping down a little bit as we head into Wednesday for central areas. Looking at some showers there as well. Temperatures in the low 20s. And for the West Coast, yeah, it's going to be pretty gray there as well. Those showers will be persisting, lots of cloud cover, and those temperatures dipping down to under 20 there. So for uh, Eastern Labrador, looking at temperatures in the mid teens, so it's definitely cooling down next week with lots of showers there as well. And for Western Labrador, similar story there, looking at temperatures hovering around 14 degrees with showers. 
in Nain and Natoshish in particular, the weather has been pretty much flat, meaning, you know, a couple hundred feet visibility. Uh, it's been pea soup fog, as we say in Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, everyone hopes for a nice summer, but on the coast of Labrador, a bad summer can mean big problems. The fog has hardly let up for more than a week now. Find out why that's such a hassle coming up.